Hi everybody, my name is Mr. Steve and I'm from the Bellingham Library and I want to tell you a story today. The name of the story is Tiki and Buko. Now Tiki always wanted to be a train conductor. Buko only wanted to see better and stop running into rocks and trees. This is their story and it's a draw and tell story. So as I'm telling you their story, I'm going to be drawing the story as well. It all starts off over here on Bellingham Farm. That is where Buko lived. One day Buko was running along and boom, ran right into the rock. Ouch, said Buko. But Buko just kept on running along until boom, he ran right into another rock. And Buko said, that is it. I'm going to go to the city to get some glasses so I can see better. The next day, Buko caught the train right at the end of the farm. And as they were going, they made a stop and picked up Mr. and Mrs. Nelson right there. And Mr. and Mrs. Nelson and Buko went together all the way towards the city. Buko liked having the company. Meanwhile, Tiki lived over there in the mountains. And remember, Tiki, more than anything, wanted to be a train conductor. That same morning that Buko was going by on the train, Tiki decided, I'm tired of just wishing I was a train conductor. I want to actually become a train conductor, so I'm going to go to the city and meet with the train president. So Tiki took off from the mountains, caught the train right there, and they went all the way down to the city together. Once they got to the city, Buko got off really quickly and went into this really big building, just like this. Buko went in this door and took the elevator all the way up to the sixth floor to the eye doctor's office. Once he got there, he knocked on the door. Come in, come in, said the eye doctor. Buko told the eye doctor that he couldn't see very well and was running into rocks and trees. And the eye doctor said, well, let's give you a test. And they gave Buko a test. And the eye doctor said, yep, you're right, you need glasses. And the eye doctor worked on the cash register and said, that's going to be $100. Oh, no. Buko did not think about money. Buko did not have $100. He did not have enough money even to make it all the way back to the farm on the train. So he went down the elevator, out the door, and then sat right over here in the park and cried. Meanwhile, Tiki went in this door and took the elevator all the way up to the ninth floor. And that's where the train president was. When Tiki got to the train president's door, Tiki went and the train president said, come in, come in. Tiki walked into the office and said, President, I would like to be a train conductor. Well, let me tell you, that train president was not very nice. He laughed and he laughed and he laughed and said, you? You're way too small to be a train conductor. And that made Tiki very mad. Tiki went all the way down, out that door, and then around the building, and instead of waiting for the train, Tiki started heading back towards the mountains himself. Tiki was saying, if they don't want me to drive a train, I don't want to ride a train either. So Tiki was going, 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 going. But now it's getting kind of dark. Tiki saw a lake right over here, and he pulled off to the side of the road and decided to take a nap. Meanwhile, as it was getting dark outside, Mr. and Mrs. Nelson happened to go past um, Buko, who was sitting in the park crying still. And they asked Buko, what's wrong? What's wrong? Buko explained the whole problem, needing glasses, not having enough money for it, not even enough money to go to the train. And so Mr. Nelson said, relax, relax, Buko. We're pretty close to the farm right now. And he drew a map for Buko. He said, if you just go this way, just like that, 
think he'll be to the farm pretty quickly. But remember, what was the one thing Buko couldn't do very well? See, right. So instead of going the way that Mr. Nelson had suggested, Buko ended up going the same way that Tiki was. Went. So followed along like this. Boom, 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 boom. And Buko is thundering along. Boom, 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 boom. Crying, not paying any attention. And then all of a sudden he heard a noise like this. Hey! And he looked down and he saw Tiki right there. And Tiki said, you have to watch where you're going. You're going to hurt me. And Tiki was so mad still. And Buko was sad. Buko said, I'm sorry. I didn't see you. I'm really, 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 really sorry. How about I make it up to you and you, I'll give you a ride and we can go back to the mountains for you. And Tiki agreed. So Buko started walking up towards the mountains like this with Tiki on his back. Oops, there we go. And as they were walking, Tiki said, you know, this is kind of like being a train conductor. I can tell you where to go and you go that way. And Buko said, yeah, and you know, I like it too because you're telling me how I can miss the rocks to go left and go right and I'm not hitting the rocks at all. They decided they would be friends forever. So if you are ever in Africa and you happen to see a bird on the horns of a rhinoceros, you have probably just seen Tiki and Buko. And see, that's the end of the story. So now we can see that, we'll put an eye there. We can see that there's a rhinoceros. That was Buko. There's Tiki the bird, and they're helping each other out. That's called a symbiotic relationship. When two animals who are not like each other at all help each other out and they work together in nature. Can you think of any other animal relationships that are like that? Why don't you think about it for a little while, and next time you see me, you can let me know what you thought of. All right, thanks for listening.